I'm just doing a quick update. I'm gonna throw this in on the video. My wife did some work on the tank. These are some new plants she added. It actually looks quite good. I'm not a fan of that plant, but the other ones look all right. I'm just gonna throw this in. Maybe give you guys some ideas. Still not ready for fish though. Uh, it's been up for a while now, four or five, maybe even six weeks. It's getting a lot of brown algae in there. Uh, I don't know, it's worse than the other tanks. I don't know why, but. All right, up, um, a somewhat quick video here. When I bought this, I couldn't get any info on this um, Platinum 34 Refugium Sump. There was just no info, and there was a little bit on YouTube, not much, and the stuff they said was incorrect. So, they probably just didn't know. I wanted to go over the fleece roll here, the way it works. It comes down the back. You have two plastic inserts to keep it between a wall right here. Um, that's for high pressure, high volume. It's not needed otherwise, they said, but you might as well put it in. It keeps it tidied in. It comes down. It goes through the roller, through the roller, back all the way up to this is your waste. As you see, that's the dirty. And uh, it does dry up and doesn't smell or anything because it only pulls through like like maybe this much. The water level here drops. See, mine's about to trip. That's going to go up a little more. Then it's going to drop just a little. It only pulls a little at a time. Uh, and, and, and they explain in line how this worked, but they were they were incorrect. So you can see this down here. I think this here, this is a sealed off chamber from, from the other side where the water comes in. The water comes in here. That's your, your overflow comes into here. Now I like to make sure mine's in the water so it's quiet. And then it's forced through this chamber. From over there, there's an opening. And the only way out is through here, but Let's say this thing completely fails, that stops skimming. I mean, it stops rolling it up. What happens is, is it comes out this overflow here and there's a hole on the side over there so it can bypass the fleece. So it wouldn't be a problem. Also, it has two floats. The guy in line stated that's a second back backup float. It's not. This is your float that makes the fleece roll move and, and, and reel up and put a new piece in. Now, let's say you shut your sump off, your pump, and this raises up. Well, if that was the case, and this was a backup float in case that one failed, it would just run the fleece roll forever, but it's not. So what it is, that one here causes it to roll, but if it goes up above that onto this, it stops the fleece from going because it wants to make sure it doesn't roll if your water level and the sump goes up because you shut everything down, which is what naturally happens. Then. There is a second, you can see there's a second float. Here, I'll get it better up here. You see the second float. Now, that's in the return line. If you shut your pump off, this is going to raise, and it's going to trip that, and it's going to tell the fleece roll to not go. It's going to disable it because if this raises, and that goes a certain way where it makes it run, or it stays like that, it keeps it running, you know, and your pump's off, well, you don't want that. It only needs to move when the pump's running and when it needs to get the water level down. That's a second safety. If this goes up, it shuts the fleece roll off. If this one goes up, it shuts the fleece roll off. This one is the only one that makes the roll move. Okay, I just wanted to update that because someone stated that that one here was a backup float. If that one failed, then that one made it work. That's not the case. Also, on the side, those are just your lights. Those are not buttons. This one's for power. That one lights up green when it's rolling, the fleece roll. Your buttons are here. This is an actual button that clicks in when it's on and it stays on. So if you kill the power and the power turns back on, um, it's always on. It's a press in button. It's not a digital button. This one here, you press and watch the roll. It moves very slow. But that's it. It's very slow. So it's a very slow adjustment. Just from that little movement, uh, this thing just went down. <laughs> that's all it took. And my water level here just went up. So you set that one an inch above your water level about. And same with this one. I set it at my water level because an inch above, it was too high for whatever reason. So anyways, that's that. You've got these four dosing tubes, or you could use it for your auto top off, whatever you want, really. 
Then in here, you've got your probe holders for salinity, pH, ammonia, whatever you want to use them for, which is nice. Now, I'm using this for dosing, and at this time, I'm not using it for my auto top off because I use a system that uses an odd size tube. So, mine are in here with the brackets they came with. Uh, the little black bracket holders right there. Um, and those are just dumping into my skimmer chamber. This one here pulls the water out when my auto water change happens. That pumps the water out. And I have it going outside, so it pumps outside into it instead of a drain. It's too too far in my drain. In the winter, that will be an issue. I'll, I'll have to modify it eventually. I am using this for my auto top off and auto water change. I haven't actually used it yet. I tested it, but it's not. I'm not ready for it yet. I'm still stabilizing my water levels. Um, also... You've got a movable fitting. So this is a one inch fitting. It can go here or you can mount it here. Um, these wires can be moved. I zip tied them up so they're out of the way. So that's just an extra one. You can direct feed your pump or you can do another return. Now there is two return lines back here. There's this one, let me see. And then there's a second one next to it. Hopefully I'm getting that. Okay, there's two. Uh, not return. Oh, it's so confusing. In the plumbing industry, your return is the one that comes back and your supply goes out. They call the return the one that goes up, which is so weird. All right. But anyways, it's a very simple design. Everything works. Um, and right now, all I have is ceramic rings. I ordered some biomedia, but threw that in there for now. You have an adjustable chamber here. That can go up and down just by pushing it. I don't keep it tight enough to, to not be able to push it because it holds... That's to raise this chamber. This one's always a little higher due to the filter. This one's lower because that's your sump. That's just how they work. It's got a removable thing in here. Uh, you can just pull these out if you need to. You know, your thingy here. Um, I have more media in there. I have like five pounds of ceramic media in here right now. So it's very simple. It all works quite good. It's a very nice looking sump. It's colorful. Uh, I just wanted to go over that also the efflux pump i wanted to go over uh so i'm using the current i couldn't hear what i see he is talking to me here um so the current usa is what i'm using for the pumps the wave pumps the lights it's all integrated through bluetooth it seems to work fine but this is the smallest pump it's a thousand fifty gallon per hour but with a nine foot <laughs> return line it's about 400 max which is probably pushing it to it's max. I'm at 100% power. Uh, it runs fine at 80%, but 100 is where I got it, and it's working fine. I also purchased the two, the 1,900 gallon per hour one too, which I already tried. It almost made no difference, and I think it's because it's a three-quarter inch line. I believe I'm going to have to upgrade that three-quarter to one inch so it can have more volume to for the bigger pump. I'm going to keep this. 1,050 gallon per hour as a spare, and I think I'm gonna use the 1,900 as my main pump once I get a bigger return line. Um, what I wanted to talk about on this pump, they don't recommend pushing it this hard. The manufacturer says it's not designed for a sump basement application up through to your second floor, which, you know, it makes no sense. Here's the deal. They give a, a listing. It says it can handle, this one can handle like 11 or 12 foot head but they don't want you to use it because if you go nine feet, well, it's not designed for that, but yet it says it's good for like 11 and a half feet or 12 and a half feet. I can't remember. Now let's say you're only going up four feet, like a traditional sump and tank under each other. It's at least four feet. Every elbow counts as one foot of head pressure. So let's say you have three nineties in there going up. Well, that's three feet plus four. That's seven feet head pressure because of those 90s, even though you're four feet away. So they're telling me seven and eight feet head, you shouldn't run them like that. But yet, if you did a manifold with plumbing, it would be the same exact scenario because you'd be deducting a foot of head pressure for each elbow, which makes no sense. So they're basically saying, it says it can do 12 feet head, but it shouldn't do it because it's stressful on the pump. Well, here's the deal. If it says it can do it, it needs to be able to do it or else it's a junk pump. And I've been finding this out with other manufacturers. They're saying they put right on the website in the description, not for basement applications. You know what? 
This is a straight line. There's not one bend or kink. There's no bends. It's straight up with a big gradual bend. That's There's no restriction for that. That's not a 90. All right. I'm nine feet up, eight and a half, nine feet. It should be able to do that all day long forever. And if it can't, then these pumps are being built too cheap. The Ecotech pumps, their medium sized one says nine, a 21 foot head and they say it can do it. So I'm a little concerned that these other DC motors, that the companies, and there's other brands, I'm not gonna mention them all, that said they can't do it as well, even though it's rated at the proper head for what I'm doing. Thing is, I got it 100 percent water flow for a 29 gallon tank with a 20 something gallon sump and it can handle more than that so the pump's maxed out i feel like it's just not enough the other thing if your usb cable gets pulled out and you're running bluetooth well there's an issue here i might have listed this already once but something has changed now originally I set this dial to match. Before, I was only running the pump at 80%, and when I unplugged this, if this was at 100, it went to 100. If it was at 40%, it went to 40 when you unplugged it. So I set this dial so that it kept the same water level as when I plugged this in. Hopefully you understand that. Now here's the deal. I don't know what changed, but when I unplug this now, it goes to 100% power no matter where the dial is set. When I unplug it, with the dial at zero, it goes to 100% power until I move the dial, and then it goes to where it is. So that's a problem. Let's say someone bumps that out, knocks it out, and doesn't know, and you got your pump at 50% only, and now you knock it out, and your motor goes to 100%, overflows your tank, floods the room, because your overflow box can't handle it, the plumbing can't handle it, because a wire got a loose connection. Um, that's not good. Now, I don't know what changed, but when I originally set this up, well, I can tell you, when I originally set this up, I was using the 1900 gallon per hour module here. This is the 1050 gallon per module. And the thing is they're identical looking, but this one lights a light up that says 1050 gallon per hour pump. When I use the other module for the 1900 gallon per hour pump, even when I plug it into this pump, it says 1900 gallon per hour. I think there's something different in the controls, even though it worked the same way, when it came to using it, it worked fine, the same flow. But what was different was the other one, when I pulled this out, it went where I had this set every time. So if I had this set at 60% and I yanked that out, it would go to 60%. This one goes to 100% every time I pull that out, no matter where I have it set through the Bluetooth app. Remember, when you pull that out, you're not linked to the app anymore, which means your settings are useless in the app. It is now going by this. But even though you got that down at 50, it's at 100 until you go to the knob here and just move it like this, jiggle it, and then it goes to your setting on there, which makes no sense. I'm updating this because nobody has info on YouTube. I searched. There's no info on these, on this eFlux stuff. Nobody has tested it out to this extreme and done these types of tests. I'm very thorough. I'm very good with electronics. I test everything. I try everything because I want to know what happens if that wire falls out in the middle of an event that it does. Or let's say it gets kinked somewhere and it disconnects. I want to know what that pump's going to do. Now, it should go to your setting, but it doesn't. It goes to 100%. Now, in that case, I purchased an overflow box that handles more power, more return, more overflow than my tank needs. That way, if it goes to 100%, it can handle it. And that is your best bet. Get an oversized overflow box. It doesn't hurt anything. It actually works out better. I have this cranked. It's probably only pushing 400 gallons per hour, maybe. 29 gallon tank, you don't really need more than that. But anyways, I know I've been rambling. This video is way longer than I planned, but this is important stuff that nobody's got out there. So I'm hoping someone from this company, Current USA sees this video because uh, there's no information on any of this. And also when using the app, it only goes in 10% increments. So basically you go 50%, 60%. So you want to fine tune it, but you can't. 
Now, originally I had a small overflow box and when I went from 70 to 80%, 80 was too much, 70 was too low. I couldn't get a happy medium. So if I unplug this with the dial, I was able to get that happy medium, but now I can't use it through the app. So you tell me, I mean, I'm gonna send them an email telling them these things because they need to be addressed. Uh, they just need to be addressed. You should be able to do 1% increments from the app. That's a simple fix for them. All right, um, this is a long enough video, way longer than planned. Can't believe how fast these videos go when I'm rambling on. All right, if you guys have questions, please let me know. And um, I'll update you guys uh, when I start using the auto water change feature. And yes, I'm using a crappy pail right now because the <laughs> empty acrylic reservoir is $170. Insane. All right. Uh, have a good day, guys.